Welcome everybody to Funeral Nation episode 161. 161. I'm Ryan Fogg Martin. That is Jeff the Funeral Commander Hartwison. And this is the only news and information related consistent web show for the funeral profession on the planet. Yeah, it's the most up-to-date information that comes out. You know, you do a great job there with connecting directors of putting things, but uh, our information, data, and up-to-date news. I find it interesting that we get news oftentimes a week later or a month later based on uh, how you subscribe to finding out what's going on. But we're up-to-date. And speaking of up-to-date, there's only one thing that we need to talk about, and that's the fuel to our engine. And that's the folks at C&J with Jamie. Jamie had a nice layout in a magazine recently. Mm -hmm. He's a great guy with his family. Their entire work family is a family. And frankly, uh, if you don't use them, you're wrong because you're not getting your money and the funeral's not over with until you get paid. So let's run their promo. If all insurance assignment companies say they pay fast and are easy to work with, why do twice as many funeral homes choose CNJ Financial? Over the past two decades, CNJ and its affiliates have served in excess of 633,000 families and funded more than $3.6 billion in assignments to funeral homes and cemeteries throughout North America. If you're tired of the hassle, headache, and cash flow delay in processing insurance death claims, CNJ's fast funding program can help. Let us show you why thousands of funeral homes across America choose CNJ for their assignment funding needs and why many associations, accounting firms, and industry leaders recommend CNJ to their client and members. In every business, there's one gold standard. In insurance assignment funding, it's CNJ. All right, Ryan. So we have some uh, interesting news. You posted it. Uh, or getting ready to do some work on it. And I read an article, I believe it was out of the Washington Post recently, yeah. about death with dignity dying. Yeah. And, you know, I've said this personally uh, before that we, it's, I'm, I'm certain it's a religious issue for many people, but there's also a humane side of it. You know, it's interesting that we have pets and animals that when they get really sick, we know they're not going to live um, to, to put them down. Um, why not have that choice personally that if you don't want to extend your life and go through um, the pain and suffering or put your family through that, why not have that option? You know, it's interesting reading that article that you sent and then um, HBO, th that article was kind of talking about an HBO documentary that came out on the 14th called Alternate Ways to Die or Alternative Endings. And there was six ways, new ways to die. And, you know, that, that conversation of assisted suicide is interesting because in that article, you know, someone that had chose that for their end of life from California said like, you know, I can control almost everything about my life except the way I'm going to die. And this takes death back into my control, which I think is a, a point that I haven't really looked at when, when, you know, this conversation isn't new per se. It's been a, a conversation that's happened for a while, but now it's be, being brought back into the forefront again. I think, I think that's an interesting point is, you know, death is something that we typically ourselves don't get to control how it happens. This is a way if somebody is going through something, they're able to kind of take that back into the control. So I don't, I don't know that it's right or wrong or, you know, I think that's a conversation that's going to be had. But I think the bigger point here as a profession is these topics are being brought to the forefront um, not in the wrong ways, but in the hands of somebody that doesn't have the profession at in their best interest. So HBO does this documentary. The profession is not involved in this documentary other than a few like green burial companies and some space um, flight companies. But as associations and big players in the profession, no one's involved in that conversation. Shouldn't we as a profession be the ones that are bringing these conversations into the forefront, not so that we can control the rhetoric, but so that we can control the information that is factual that's being shared and actually how does a family go about achieving these alternate ways um, for, for death. I just think it's, you know, we're, we're allowing the conversation to be held by people that don't have our best interest in mind. 
Well, it's interesting. My thoughts based on what your commentary was just there is we're still trying to learn how to speak to cremation families. Yeah. <laughs> what do yeah. cremation families want? So how in the world can we leap for something that's been around for 20 years? We haven't even really done a great job at mastering, mm -hmm. much less. So that, that I, in some respects, again, I'm not saying that we should be fully involved, but I agree with you. We should have some part yeah. in the process, but we haven't evolved enough within our own profession in order to have a seat at the table. We're, we're, we're left behind. You know, we had a, a pretty big segment about Amazon getting into the business. That's coming. Yeah. Uh, the more, uh, after we talked about that, I've seen a couple different things come along and did some research on my own. So we're just, we're just still focusing uh, right on the immediate versus looking into the future. That's right. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like we're not evolving. And it goes back to that conversation. We're working on a campaign for a client right now, um, a pre campaign where we're, we're doing a lot of custom video work. And one of the props that we grabbed for nostalgia was a 1930s yearbook, a local yearbook. And going through it, there's ads in the back of it. And we saw a funeral home ad. Uh, and we have an intern that graduated college or high school last year. We asked her to bring in her yearbook from her senior year. And it's, it's the exact same advertising from 1930. Like nothing has evolved in the way that we're talking and, and engaging with families. It's absolutely absurd. So, I mean, all of this conversation just goes back to the fact that the consumer is so far progressed in the conversation and we are not even coming close to meeting the mark of having that conversation in real time with them. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I think that we'll have some more commentary and look into this a little deeper next week for sure. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, having a clue, our folks at Ring Ring Marketing, Welton Hong and his gang, in fact, I've got to talk to them a little bit later today. I have to tell you that uh, what they're doing is brilliant. It's something within our industry that's necessary. And for the funeral homes that are taking advantage of what he's doing and how to do it, they're the ones that are progressing. And we're going to talk about that in our next segment. But let's go ahead and run Ring Ring Marketing's ad. We're Ring Ring Marketing. We help funeral homes generate at least 10 more at-need calls per month. Our techniques help you dominate local search rankings and become the top choice for services in your area. We also proudly offer a 100% money-back guarantee. For a free copy of our book, visit www.funeralhomeprofits.com. All right, Jeff. So uh, you were doing some research, some digging for another project earlier this week, and you notice something that is really, really not good. Yeah, you know, I'm going to call it wilted websites. Uh, I had the opportunity this week through a project that I'm working on to peruse probably 50 or more websites. And I'm appalled at what I see. I would give it maybe 60 60% of the funeral homes out here have something that's updated, looks pretty decent, you know, not way up to super flash standards. But to me, what I would see is acceptable. But this other 40% of our business that has a wilted website is just flat out inexcusable. I've seen sites that, I mean, literally look like that they were built when the internet first came out. Uh, and, and what gives me too is that the funeral home, the persona is the people, the reputations built by the people uh, that work there, including the owners. And site after site after site I go to, they don't even mention staff. They don't even mm. tell who owns the funeral home. You know, it, it's interesting that everybody jumps on the big public company, right, SCI, because most of the time you won't see a lot of local stuff on there. It's just more of a national with information. Well, local funeral homes are worse. They own it. They have the opportunity to do it and don't even step out and use it. Or better yet, they hire a local bred website company that doesn't know diddly about the profession to create a website that would work well for a t-shirt shop, but not so well for a funeral home. No, it's more of a landing page. I mean, it's embarrassing. And the copy, you know, is about history about this long, about, you know, 15 
paragraphs of we've been here since Sherman burnt down the South, which great. So was your website, you know, I mean, seriously. So Ryan, you know, I have an idea and we need to reach out and certainly the website manufacturers, developers, not manufacturers, but developers here uh, that watch our show. We're going to do a little challenge. We want to get some of you guys to reach back to us and let's do a uh, website makeover contest okay. where, you know, it used to be, what was it? A home makeover or something oh, like yeah. that. Outfit makeover. We, we need to select a few funeral homes out here and really do something to help them get in the game because obviously they can't help themselves. Right. What are your thoughts about that? I think it's a great idea and it gives a, it gives a website company the opportunity to shine because you're going to get a lot of press from us and exposure from us. So, um, Hit us up. You can email me, Ryan, at disruptmedia.co, and uh, we will get you connected with Jeff and I and, and figure out a way to make this work. Yeah, and then we're going to figure out how to reach out to the less fortunate um, who are connected by the interweb because it's, it's pitiful. I mean, if you have a site that you haven't updated in three years, it's old. If you have a site that hasn't been updated in 15 years, it's dead. Your site is dead. It's just no good. And please, no music, piano music in the background. That's I, I saw two this week. Gotta love it. Oh, Look, speaking, terrible. Speaking of updated, uh, our friends at Kraken, uh, I continue to see some updates and what they're doing. Um, I, I'm on a high with these guys because seriously, um, having a dashboard and running, especially a multi- location operation that's not an easy thing to do erasing out your whiteboard just down the garage of what deaths are going on and actually have each individual of your business able to contribute and update i don't think there's anything better that's right it's a uh, communication uh, it's the purpose of communication to functionally run a business is your current business management tool responsive to your needs just think about it are your tech partners there when you need them, when you need them the most? At Kraken, we view customer success as different than customer service. Customer success is about you. It's proactive, and it focuses on the opportunities to help you perform better. Customer success learns your processes and provides you with the best business solutions. Our customer success team includes a dedicated customer success specialist who collaborates with you every step of the way. We deliver real people to help you solve real problems. We also deliver professional training to you and your team on site or by webinar. We know that new processes can sometimes be scary to our colleagues. To help the timid adapt to change, your customer success specialist will work with you to make them comfortable and productive as quickly as possible. Tips like these can free up your time so you can spend more time with your families. Learn more about Kraken's productivity and efficiency tools at kraken.net. How will you spend the time you save? Let's get cracking. Good deal. All right, Commander. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're back from the beach. I'm back from the beach. We're in our normal habitat for who knows how long uh, things change. But next week, we're going to continue this conversation. So if you've got an opinion, we want to hear it. Whether you agree, disagree, you know, whatever side you're on, doesn't matter. Let's have a conversation because this is... This is something that affects everybody. And the better we can get at having the conversation before somebody else takes it over, man, that, that's going to be a game changer. So you got to be prepared for what the consumer wants. Yeah, I don't disagree. At least have a seat at the table. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, thanks, Ryan. Another great 161. And uh, we'll connect up next week, right? Okay. Until next time, have a great effing week. Out here. Thank you.